Romans 8, 28 through 30 is one of the most referenced passages by Calvinists to support their view of individual election to effectual salvation. Verse 28 reads, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Now before proceeding, let's look at the context of the passage. Remember what we've learned. A text without a context is a pretext for a proof text. Earlier in the chapter, Paul wrote, We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up into the present time. Paul goes on to encourage the believers that we wait eagerly for the hope of our glorification as we endure through the sufferings today. And he reminds us that the Spirit will help us when we pray in our weakness, with groanings, and words that we cannot possibly even understand. In verse 28, there is a shift to provide comfort for believers who in their weakness are suffering. And Paul reminds the Christians, we know that in all things God will work things out for good. He will redeem the bad that is happening for those who love him, those of us who have been called according to his purpose. And how do we know that God will do this? Well, just look at all that God has done for those who followed him before. Which leads right into verse 29. For those he foreknew. Notice the shift to the past tense in verse 29. He references those foreknown in the past. In fact, all the verbs from verse 29 and following are in the aorist active indicative tenses, which indicates that the action of the verb has already taken place with respect to the subject of the verb. So when we read verse 30, it says, And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Again, all in the past tense, which the most basic understanding grammatically would be in reference to those in the past. Thus the word prognosco, which we translate into the word foreknew, can simply be in reference to those formerly known in times past. In the Calvinism versus Arminianism debate since the 16th century that's dominated Western Christianity, many have failed to look outside of the parameters set in the 16th century to understand various ways to interpret this passage that would be more consistent with the first century language. Many modern scholars, therefore, only see two options with regard to this text. Prognosco either means foresee, or it must mean to foreordain. Prominent Calvinistic pastor John Piper, for example, says, Option one is God foresaw our self-determined faith. We remain the decisive cause of our salvation, and God responds to our decision to believe. Option two, according to John Piper, is God chose us not on the basis of foreseen faith, but on the basis of nothing in us. He called us, and the call itself creates the faith for which it calls. We believe that John Piper, like many modern-day theologians, have simply set up a false dichotomy by presenting only two possible options to this text, when more options are actually available. In fact, the most simple, basic understanding of the word prognosco is formally known, or known before. Romans 11.2 is the only other time the word prognosco is used in the letter to the Romans. God did not reject his people whom he foreknew. This clearly is in reference to the Israelites of the past, who God knew formally. One other time the Apostle Paul uses this term is in Acts 26, verse 4 and 5, when he speaks about his manner from youth and says they have known for a long time, which is, again, the word prognosco, simply interpreted as knowing something in the past. So the term prognosco, or foreknew, simply means to formally know or to know before. It does not need a lot of philosophical esoteric baggage attached to it. It's a very simple word. And just as Paul uses it in Acts and in Romans 11 too, it simply can be in reference to the Israelites of the past who loved God and were called according to his purpose. Dr. William Lane Craig, in his book, The Only Wise God, references the word study of Drs. Forrest and Marston, God's Strategy in Human History, saying, quote, God foreknew them, 
or knew them of old, thus it does not mean that God entered into some former time into a relationship with the Israelites of today. It means that he entered a two-way relationship with the Israel that existed in early Old Testament times, and he regards the present Israelites as integral with it. Dr. William Newell, a friend and colleague of D.L. Moody and R.A. Torrey, taught thousands of people as a Bible teacher in Moody's Bible College. In his book, Romans Verse by Verse, he discusses that God, quote, had acquaintanceship with the Israelites of the past. So it was not, quote, mere divine pre-knowledge of certain individuals, but a real intimate pre-acquaintanceship. So what was Paul's intention in this passage? I believe he simply is saying, Christians, don't worry. We know from past experience that God always works out everything for those who love God and are called to follow him. If you want proof, look at those God previously knew, loved, and called in the past. He determined them to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that his Son would become the firstborn of many brethren. What better example of God working out all things together for good than his work through the Israelites of old to bring the Messiah to this world for the redemption of all mankind. While I am convinced that the term prognosco is best understood as in reference to those of the past, there are other viable interpretations from a non-Calvinistic perspective. Some classical Arminians have simply understood foreknown as to mean foreseen, in the sense that God simply knows beforehand who is going to have faith, and those are the ones he is predestined to be conformed into the image of his Son. Some non-Calvinists believe that God's foreknowledge of an individual's faith is the basis for his decision to save them and predestine them to be conformed to the image of Christ. Calvinists often caricature this position by saying something like, God looks to the quarters of time to see who will believe and therefore elects those individuals and then they paint all non-Calvinists as to holding this position. What must be understood is that on this perspective, God is omniscient, not omnideterministic, which means that God's knowledge is rooted in his eternal nature as God, not his ability to look through the quarters of time, which is why this is a caricature painted by Calvinist to dumb down this perspective and make it sound unreasonable. Another non-Calvinistic interpretation of Romans 8.29 is to understand the word prognosco, or foreknown, to be in reference to those known in Christ through faith. This is known as corporate election. It observes that the election of God's people in the Old Testament was a consequence of the choice of an individual who represented the group, the corporate head and representative. So from this perspective, the verse might mean, for those God foreknew would be in Christ by faith, he predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son. I believe any of these interpretations are more valid than that introduced by Calvinism and their golden chain of redemption, as seen exemplified here. What Romans 8, 28 through 30, or maybe even just 29 and 30 would be called, um, would be called what we see as the golden chain of redemption, as it's classically known. In other words, there are links within that chain, whereas none of them are ever broken. So if you are part of any one of those, you will make it to the end of those. And it starts with the foreknowing of God and all eternity past and the predestination, moves on to the calling, the justification, and the glorification. And there's not a broken link in any of that. So Calvinist, more fatalistic interpretation of the word prognosco is understood as forechosen or foreordained, and thus those who are foreknown in eternity past are fated to believe when they are called, and then they are justified and glorified for reasons that are beyond their control, which logically entails that all other people are fated to damnation for reasons beyond their control. As John Calvin himself wrote, quote, By predestination we mean the eternal decree of God, by which he determined with himself whatever he wished to happen with regard to every man. All are not created on equal terms, but some are preordained to eternal life, others to eternal damnation. And accordingly, as each has been created for one or the other of those ends, we say that he has been predestined to life or to death. There is no basis on which to conclude that most people are fated to unbelief for reasons that are beyond their control which is ultimately 
the logical end of the Calvinistic interpretation of Romans 8, 28 through 30. As Paul reminded Timothy, this is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. Please like and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to visit Soteriology101.com. If you can help us spread the news of God's love and provision, click the support link in the top right corner. If you're interested in a higher theological education, click on the classroom link and learn more about Trinity Seminary.